What's up, man? Welcome back to the second episode of It Is What It Is. That's right. Episode number two. I had this whole idea of like what I really wanted to do. Um, and I was thinking the other night, I was like, man, let me just, I just, I need more. I need, I need more. Um, so as opposed to like waiting to do episodes like every Friday or to post every Friday I'm gonna be posting Monday Wednesday and Friday and uh, on Fridays I'll have special guests um, so today's episode is on relationships thank you for being here um, and you know we're just gonna start it off you know relationships they They be cool, you know. They're great, you know, when you're in them, you know. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's it's all it's all good. Uh until it's not. And then you have to worry about or work on uh communication and listening and comprehending what people say. Um I I think that's one of the one of the biggest things. Um that people have an issue with uh, is learning how to communicate and learning how to not just communicate but how to also comprehend and pay attention to what is being said um, for whatever reason um, my friends call me for relationship advice which is which is mind-blowing to me because uh, out of 80% of my friends uh, it's only a few of us who are single and uh, I am one of those people <laughs> that is single uh, being single is cool you know, um, I had my fun. I did what I did, and then and then I was like, "All right, I'm cool on that." Uh, I I had a great time doing all those things, but then I was just like, mm, uh, "I'm good on this, man. I am really good on this." Uh, as a result of that, I let me get close to the camera. Uh, I am. Uh, not one, but a two-year celibate, and it's actually not that bad. <laughs> uh, it's actually been super chill, super relaxed, man. I, I feel like I have, uh, I feel like I have been able to heal and break soul ties um, and really began really begun to have focus on the things that I want for myself want for my son want for my future family um, it's it's really been great and I can't I can't express that enough however at this point um, I'm tired of being single damn it <laughs> I'm tired of being single it's lonely out here in these streets, man. Um, it's really, it's really, it's really lonely. So let's let's uh, take a moment of silence for um, my relationship life and my sex life. Amen. 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 Um, uh, the sex life thing is. I'm, I'm really good on sex. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really good on that. Uh, just because, like, yo, I, and I'll honestly, like, I don't, I don't want that. I don't, I don't need that in my life right now. Um, sounds good. Sounds great. It's, it's, it sounds actually, actually, pretty, pretty amazing. Like, to, to, you know, have sex. You know, it. Oh man, just. But I also know it comes with sex, and I and I I know 
uh, the emotional side that comes with it. And it's a lot to really like deal with. It's a lot um, to process. And soul ties are a thing, man. They're, they are, uh, they are a thing. And, you know, uh, after deciding to, and le- let me not say like, I, I, I didn't actually come out and say, okay, well, I'm going to be celibate. The person I was talking to, you know, and, and kind of like dealing with, um, you know, we just kind of stopped having sex and we just kind of, you know, stopped dealing with each other in that way. Um, and then I was like, oh, okay, I mean, I'm kind of good on this. I'm kind of good on this. And, and it was great. I'm actually glad that I, that I did it because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm way more focused. I, I feel like God has been able to speak to me in ways that he probably would have never been able to speak to me or I would have never been able to hear if I was still like having sex with people, um, you know, and casually like, you know, entertaining relationships that I that I knew I never really wanted. Um, for me, it was really just like about the sex at the time, like, yo, I just kind of want to have sex um but i also understand and i also know that for me like when i then at that point i don't know what it's like now because i um haven't had sex in a while but then for me um sex became something something that i ran to uh, essentially like i ran to sex because i didn't want to deal with like my emotions and my feelings and the things that i had done you know it was just like it's, it's an escape it was an escape for me to be like, okay, like I want to have sex, so I'm gonna go have sex, and and all that good stuff. Um, but you know, just getting back to relationships, you know, relationships are a lot, they're a lot of work, man. And you gotta, you gotta, if, if something that you're committed to, you have to put in the time and the work for it to for it to work properly. Um, I realize now at this point in my life that like there. There are reasons for everything, and everything happens for a reason. Uh, and I'm so grateful, and I'm so thankful to be where I am, um, because had I not been in that place to say like I initially wanted to change, um, then I don't know where I would be, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I know I wouldn't be here. I, I know that I wouldn't be in this place to take this leap of faith to start you know this show um i wouldn't be this focused on, on what i want to do i wouldn't know what i wanted to do i would still be out here looking lost um and you know i i had a conversation with my son's mom at the beginning of this year pre-covid and everything you know um and, and while like i while i will always love her and while i will always have a special place in my heart for her um, we had a conversation and I was just like, you know, I'm actually grateful and thankful for us not being together. Um, I'm grateful and thankful for me to be able, able to say that to you. I'm thankful and grateful that I'm even able to tell you like, yo, I, I'm, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And if I was still in love with you and I, if I was still like trying to get your attention to be like, Hey, like, uh, see me, see that I've changed, then, you know, um, I'd still be out here looking lost. I'd still be out here trying to get your attention and be looking mad dumb. (laughs) Um, but that's, that's, I'm, I'm just in a in such a such a a better place man um but i i've been having this conversation about relationships a lot lately about my own in my own personal life and then with my friends as well um and and it really just it sucks because we as guys you know for all my fellas out there like are our condition to not express ourselves um and and then when we do it it is always something or someone that kind of comes back and uses our own emotions like 
against that, which really sucks ass because it's like uh, we took an intimate moment and shared with you some things that really meant a lot to us. Um, and then in the heat of the moment, like you threw that shit back in our face. A lot of times what happens in relationships is that we don't realize that what we saw and what we, what we were exposed to growing up um, plays a huge part in who we are today and how we handle things. Um, and it's, it's, it's a lot to say and it's a lot to deal with because you know when you get down to like the meat and potatoes of everything like a lot of your a lot of our emotional trauma stems from like early childhood to like college life <laughs> where you know we just suppress so many different things um that have happened to us um you know and it's not necessarily all like bad things you know it's it's just things that people have said to us that were hurtful um people not not supporting us the way that we should be supported um you know not being loved the way that we feel like we should be loved um you know and i think also not knowing our love language uh and everyone has a love language um i mine are um words of affirmation and quality time and and i realized that um through self-discovery this summer um with just you know sitting and talking to god and just um looking at my life and, and, and asking myself, okay, well, why am I the way that I am and why, um, why do I do the things that I do in the way that I do them? Um, and why do I, why do I crave quality time or words of affirmation? Um, and what I realized in that was even though like I knew my parents loved me and I know that my parents love me um, and they did all the things that parents are supposed to do, um, you know, where I had all the functions and were, were very supportive. Um, I realized that I, I never, I can't remember my parents actually saying, hey, I, I love you for like no reason. I don't remember it. I'm not saying that they didn't, because I remember seeing it on cards. Um, I remember it like special occasions, but like never just randomly like, hey, I love you. Hey, I love you. Hey, I love you. And for me, like hearing that is so affirming to me. Um, hearing that in a lot of ways makes me feel like um, It makes me feel loved and cared for. Like you, you know, showing up for me um, and being there is great. But if you don't, if you don't tell me that you love me, if you don't, if you don't, if I don't hear those words, if I don't hear your support, if I don't, if I don't feel your support, then for me, in all actuality, it's like really care do you really um do you really want to be here am i really important to you now i'm not talking at this point i'm no longer talking about my family about you know my my mom my dad or even my sister at this point it's about everyone else um or anyone else that that, that i invite into my personal life um because affirmation is important to me um, quality time is important to me now more than anything because I lost my mother six years ago this month um, and if I'm being completely honest with you guys uh, because this show is about about honesty and I'm gonna be open about honesty 
Um, my mother was my everything. She was my best friend. She was my parent. And let me explain what my parent means. Um, she was she was at everything I did. She was like the school volunteer mom. She was the band booster president. She was at all of the the band camps and all the band trips, um, all the meetings. She was literally like we literally spent pretty much all of our time together, especially when I got in middle school and high school, you know. Um, she was everywhere and I and, and and I took it for granted. And then in my tenth grade year of high school she had uh, she had a stroke. And that that was the beginning of a beautiful relationship um, in its downfall for me um, because I didn't I didn't know how to process that I didn't know how to deal with it and in a lot of ways I blamed I blamed um, myself for for her having a stroke um, but then I also was very angry with her and I know that doesn't make sense but I was angry because it was like yo I don't know this person anymore like yeah you're telling me that my mother is still alive and yeah she's still here and like I can physically touch her but this woman this new person she not she not it like she can't while she was everything to me um at that point she changed it everything changed for me and i didn't know how to process it which in return um which in return caused me to backlash um and be rude and disrespectful um i said some very hurtful things to not just her but to my to my dad and even to my sister um conversations were really heated uh, at that time um, and I just didn't know how to process it um, so you know from the first stroke until she died our relationship was kind of like up in the air um, because I, I I think I think now even in current moment like I, I just didn't want to be patient because I didn't want to get to know I didn't want to accept the change uh, that had happened, you know, seven years prior. Um, I didn't want to accept that my mother was not the same. I didn't want to accept um, that our relationship would never be um, what it was again. So when we talk about relationships, when we talk about quality time, like when she died, I, my entire world was flipped upside down, turned inside out, right side up. And it really just like, it broke me, but it broke me so much that I was just kind of like numb to the pain. Um, I walked away from everything um, emotionally. I walked away from our relationship with my son's mother. I walked away from being a father. I walked away from being a brother, a son, a good friend. I was really just like, yo, fuck everything. Um, and I had a real, I had a, I had a real beef with, with God. Uh, and you know, my, my sister, my sister, because I know she's gonna watch this. She, she is not gonna like what I'm about to say. Because she used to be like, Justin, don't say that, don't say that. But in actuality, like, if I'm, if we're gonna be honest and we're gonna be open, and I'm gonna be open about everything for the most part that I can be, um, I really hated God. <laughs> it was a, it was a real like, Jesus, don't talk to me. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm laughing now because looking back, it was just like, bro, I, I don't want to deal with none of this. I. Because I, I had I had made promises um, to God, I, I had made promises to myself, and and it was like, you know, I'm gonna be a better son, a better father, a better boyfriend, and then I was only really concerned about being a better son. 
uh, at the time because that was what was most important. It was more important for me to be a better son than a better boyfriend and a, and a better father. Um, and essentially what, what the hope was, was for me to, was, was it for it to be like a trickle down effect because I was a better son, I was gonna make me a better boyfriend and a better father. Um, and it wasn't until maybe two years later after my mom had passed away that, that God had kind of said, Justin, you know, um, everything that you, that you said that you wanted to do, you have done. You have become a better boyfriend. You have become a better father. You've become a better son. Like you're still, you're forgetting that you have a parent. Um, you're forgetting that your girlfriend at the time and your son like are still benefiting and, and they're still here and, and you have been a been better you know um not just for them but for yourself and for your friends um and when he said that i was just kind of like wow okay cool so i say all that to say like you know relationships um they, they take a lot of work my relationship, my relationship with god has been the most beneficial last five years um, because I I literally had to um, build up my relationship with him um, for myself and not for my not for my dad or for my sister or for my son or for my son's mother like it was really for like for myself so you know when people talk to me you know about relationship problems or stuff like that you know my first thing is always going to be, you know, talk to God, but that's not, that's practical, but it's not relatable. So, you know, um, at, at this point, like my relationship that, and I'm not, okay, so I'm not in a relationship, but the young woman that I was getting to know and, and, and talking to or whatever spending time with like um had i not taken that time to 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 allow god to like work on me and allow myself to to uh be in a place of isolation to just like listen to god um and allow him to heal me like i i don't think i would have experienced what i experienced with her um, I don't think I would have been able to experience um, a sense of peace, um, a, a sense of like real joy and, and happiness. And that's not because of her being in her life. Um, it's really just uh, from a standpoint of like being healed. Um, and, you know, it's crazy because God uses relationships, you know, where you are hurt in one relationship. God will bring another relationship and that one will heal you. Um, and that, that, I kind of feel like that's what happened. But, you know, just talking about relationships and, and, and bringing it full circle, like learning how to, how to listen and how to comprehend and how to pay attention to what people are saying is very key in relationships and it's very important. Um, uh, takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, a lot of time. Um, I'm, I'm not the best. I, I've gotten better at it, but I got, I got better because what I said to myself was if I can, if I can learn to be patient, uh, learn to listen, learn to comprehend what my son's mother is saying to me, even in our heated conversations. And, um, even when she comes to me, um, and is super vulnerable, um, with, her issues and her problems if i can learn to listen and be patient and, and comprehend all of those things then i can do that with anybody i can take what i've learned with her and apply it to all of my friends so now we're like when we talk um i i, I think thrice <laughs> before before speaking um because the first time my first thought oftentimes especially with my son's mother is sometimes not it's not always the the best thought because sometimes like i i, I really want to look at her and be like what 
what the entire fuck um and then my second thought is 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 not so much like what the fuck is what the fuck it's more so like okay jesus all right <laughs> and then my third thought is is more of like all right so this is a response that i need to have and this is and let me and and because at this point by this time i've breathed i've 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 relaxed and and been able to um i've been able to think clearly so then i finally respond and say hey this is this is what i feel like you should or could do um in this situation or whatever so you know in 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 relationships now at this point like with my friends i operate the same way uh but but now i don't know i at, at this point now for me it's more of uh focus on yourself man <laughs> focus on healing yourself um because that's what's most important at this point you know 2020 has been a, a, a year of major 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 um hurt and pain but i think the, the biggest thing that that I, I feel like god wants okay that's fine go hey um go help her get stuff ready to, do, ready to go make sure hey come back Make sure everything is in her bag. Her computer, her books, all of it. She, she getting ready to go. It's already in there. All of it? Yeah. Alright. Bye. Um, but, but this year, I think, mainly this year, God wants us to have a relationship with Him. Like, I feel like that's so apparent. I, I, I feel like God is, is, is saying, hey, like, chill out with worrying about what the next person is doing and focus on your relationship with me focus on talking to me focus on allowing me to heal you so that your world can be a better place not necessarily the entire world but your world and when you begin to focus on your world as opposed to the next person's world then everything kind of makes sense it, it, everything kind of just works itself out um, because you're you're not so much stressed with what someone else is doing or what or, or worried about if they care about you or not anything like that you're worried about making sure your own happiness is intact um, but I also realized that people are afraid of their own thoughts their own feelings people are afraid of um, looking at themselves in the mirror and it's and I'm not gonna lie like the relationship that you have with yourself and with God is the most port, most important relationship that you have um, because if you're not able to look at yourself in the mirror then you are not gonna be able to take what someone says and apply it to your life you're not gonna be able to hear constructive criticism you're not gonna be able to hear what people are saying to you whether it's good or bad it's gonna go in one ear and out the other um and and that's something that i, I try to convey to my friends um in conversations because um it takes a lot and 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 by far i am not perfect and i still mess up today um it, it is a lot and it, it is frustrating um and i and i say you know i i want to be in a relationship I, because i do um i i I have always wanted to be married. I've always wanted to have that one person that I can truly be myself with um, and, and have more kids with. Um, but I also understand that like I can't rush it because for as much as I think I'm ready, I still might not be ready um, for that woman, wherever she is. And I hope wherever she is, you know that God is working on her, and or not hope that because I know that He is. I hope that she is allowing for herself to be patient um, and is working on herself so that she can be able to, you know, live a happy and proper, prosperous life. Um, but I, I think the one thing that I that I want to kind of say and close with is like, you know. Um, 
be patient with yourself, right? Um, learn to love yourself. Learn to um, listen to your own thoughts, and then and then give those thoughts to God. Uh, because if you can't talk to God about how you truly feel, then you can't talk to me. You can't talk to your friends, your loved ones about anything because they're going to judge you. Hell, I might even judge you. I'm not perfect. <laughs> um, but but I, I, I want to be this open and I, I want to be this candid because I want for you to understand and I want for you to know that like, yo, like, I love you and I'm here for you and I support you, but this shit is difficult. Um, it takes a lot of work. Um, but I'm also here to say that, you know, if you put in the time and the effort to be open and honest with yourself and look at yourself in the mirror, then like it all works out at the end of the day. Like, it, it really does. Um, you know, you learn to appreciate all of the little things that happen in your life. You learn to appreciate, um, you know, the smallest of, of things. Um, so, you know, with that said, you know, today it, it, it's, it's not necessarily more of a, it is what it is type of episode. It's, it's more of a, um, be kind to yourself and, and be patient with yourself and allow for God to do what he is going to do and stop trying to have control. Um, your relationship with God is the most important one. So learn to listen to God, learn to comprehend what God is saying to you and learn to be patient because you're in a rush and God is not. Um, so, you know, I, I hope that in some ways this has helped you. Uh, I hope that, um, you have heard, you have been able to at least hear one thing that I've said, um, today uh i hope and pray that you have a great rest of your day i i pray that um you have an, an amazing week um and please remember that uh i love you i care about you and i want to see you win peace